What is up, wrestling fans? Welcome to another pay-per-view point edition of the Smart Cut Moment Smack Talk podcast. We're going to be talking about the SummerSlam 2020 pay-per-view that's coming up this Sunday. Running down the card from top to bottom, talking about the matches that they might add to the card, our uh, thoughts on what might happen, predictions, all that other preview type of stuff that we normally do here. I'm your host as always, Tony Mango. Joining me as always are Robert D. Felice. Hey, hey. Steven Wigo. Yo, yo. And Callum Wiggins. How's it going, everyone? How is it going, everybody? We're doing a lot of these. So we were seeing a lot of each other, but, uh, yeah. I guess feeling. Was it, we're we're seeing a lot of our icons. Yeah, we're seeing a lot of our icons on Skype at the moment, but everything's going well. As well as can be expected, I guess, in the current circumstances. Got the Thunderdome to look forward to. Mm-hmm. Mm, yeah. yeah be respectful to. in the Thunderdome, guys. Wish I uh, knew Mad Max Thunderdome well enough to make some kind of jokes about that. I might have to watch that movie before that happens and we talk about it on the hot tags and stuff. We will get our first taste of that on the uh, SmackDown leading up to this, so we'll be a little bit adjusted to that when it comes to SummerSlam. But that is going to be one of those most interesting things that is uh, set up for SummerSlam here. We got at least a handful of matches on here that I'm I'm into. Some of them not as much as some other ones, and... You know, we, of course, we're going to get some more matches probably added onto this uh, since then. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight already announced. And there's a possibility of I'm counting at least like six or seven more that they might add to the card. We've also got payback coming up right afterwards. So there's a chance that SummerSlam is essentially just one of those things that sets up another pay-per-view or whatever. That's actually kind of one of the reasons... Uh, why I'm not as into SummerSlam right now as I think that I could be. I'm getting this overall sense that the game plan for SummerSlam is do it good enough, have something weird happen, and roll with that. Anybody else kind of think that that's going to be the case? We're going to get into more specifics later on, but I mean, just in general, are you thinking that SummerSlam is more of a setup thing, or are you thinking that it's actually SummerSlam? I I think with the Thunderdome edition, it's actually going to be SummerSlam until we get to the final match of the card. I don't know. Everything with WWE is like a setup for something else at the moment. So I can't really, I don't, I don't know that they will make a big deal out of it because it's in the Thunderdome, but I can't say that especially if you're going to book a pay-per-view the week afterwards, you can't really expect this to be as special as a traditional SummerSlam would be. I think it's, I think they're treating it very much like SummerSlam. I just think they're terrible at scheduling. Uh, It's always been the case. They've always, uh, like every year they seem to pull out like a random schedule where a show's only a one week apart. So I expect some throwaway matches at payback, which are going to echo what we see tonight, but I think they're going to put an effort in. That's why they're trying with this Thunderdome stuff. Well, of course, we're going to figure this out when it happens, but that's the whole point of our preview and prediction thing is uh, we're going to talk about what we think is going to happen. So let's start uh, just running down some of the options of what we don't know if it's going to happen yet. <laughs> I mean, we did this with the uh, TakeOver 30 review that we did, or, or preview, not review. Um, you know, some different matches that they might add to the card over the course of the next few days or so. There's a chance that they just randomly add something. It's a Wednesday afternoon when we're recording this, so normally they don't do that lately. They usually have been saving things for on SmackDown and then on the Saturday or the Sunday before the pay-per-view. Normally they would do something like the bump or whatever. They'll just add something at the last minute on the kickoff. We don't know what the kickoff match is going to be yet, so I'm assuming at least one match gets added to this card. And if they only had around eight or so matches, that's not enough to be as big of a pay-per-view as what they've been doing recently with, you know, uh, the big four events. So we're going to get some more matches or this is just going to be a shorter SummerSlam. And would you guys rather see this be a bigger deal like the way that SummerSlam has normally been and just be a little bit longer, even if the matches aren't necessarily the most amazing thing in the world? Or are you more along the lines of, you know what, a shorter SummerSlam with some more important matches is a better option. WWE is always better when they do shorter shows. I don't want to see them stretch something out for the sake of it. Um, A three-hour show would be great, but I expect them to drag it out. I have loved the recent trend of shorter shows. 
I think it was Money in the Bank where we had started our review at like 9.30. Uh, I'm okay with the shorter show. I think it's much better off that way. Less is more. There's no need for any show to go beyond three hours. That makes four of us then because, man, I do not want to watch like some six-hour-long SummerSlam that has filler just for the sake of being like that especially with this fear that i have that SummerSlam is going to be a setup type thing like uh there's one match in particular that i feel is going to just be we got you you're gonna have to tune in to see it again but there's a chance that that happens with several different things and with payback being right afterward i feel like it's almost a guarantee that wwe cannot pull off having two like uh normal sized pay-per-views one after the other they can't do a mega well actually it'd be three because it's technically the takeover one but like they can't do some six hour long summer slam and have enough material for payback to work out all that well and you know in the grand scheme of things wwe tends to do those double feature type things both end up not doing all that well as opposed to one is just that bad and the other one's so amazing or something so for the sake of both of the shows, I'm hoping that SummerSlam is a little bit shorter, but I do think that we're still going to get a couple more matches added to this card. And one of the options that I think that they might announce, kind of surprised that they actually didn't, is Nia Jax versus Shayna Baszler. Um, we're not going to do the same thing that we normally would do here where we would break down every possible thing that could happen in our full, you know, essential well, let's go around the horn and kind of see who's going to win every match and stuff like that. But I'm going to toss out a couple things because it'll be a little bit quicker if we do it like this. And of course, if we get some kind of announcements on uh, the hot tags, we'll address them and give some predictions and stuff. But um, essentially, out of the matches that we think might be added to their uh, yay or nay, do you think it's going to be on the card? Shayna versus Nia? Nay. Nay. No. Yeah, not going to be on it. I am hoping that it's not and that they do it on payback if they're going to do it. I really don't want to say it to begin with, but I think well, not, that that's maybe a little bit easier for them to do it that way. I mean, Raw nice, Underground. Yeah, nice spend it at the moment, isn't she? So she has to do it on a Raw Underground setting. Oh, is that going to be like their uh, their means yeah. to get around that? Because there's I'd, no I'd rules. So. Yeah, I'd assume so. That's the out of it. Well, that's, yeah, that's, that's why she appeared in it. That's a little logical. I don't think that they would follow logic. <laughs> no. Because <laughs> they're like, isn't she suspended? And it's like, yeah. yeah. Well, well, sure got around that by showing up. <laughs> it's kind of like... <laughs> uh, yeah, they there's, probably would just forget it. There's a chance, I think, that they do Liv Morgan and Ruby Riot against the Iconics, especially because there's a chance that they could use that to set them up as the challengers for the women's tag team titles. It'll happen on Raw. Either or that's a pretty show match. No thoughts where I go. No. <laughs> uh, Cesaro and Shinsuke Nakamura defending the SmackDown tag team titles against Lucha House Party. I think that that isn't going to happen because I think that they're going to put that as filler on payback. I think it'll get added to next week's SmackDown and then do it again at payback. I, I don't, I'm only surprised they put it on SummerSlam because you need a big stage for the Kalisto heel turn. Do you think? Yeah. Serious thing? Like you think he's gonna turn heel? I don't know. I'm just like <laughs> I'm just throwing, just, <laughs> just throwing stuff out there. Just like it wouldn't it wouldn't shock me. It's like oh he's made his big return and he's gonna screw the Leech House Party and he's gonna come out not wearing a mask anymore and he's gonna be I don't know whatever his real name is. Dude is looking jacked. He had a good time away because he's looking better than ever before. What is his real name? Blank All of these mind. matches sound like I just don't care about them, so I'm hoping they're just thrown on payback and I don't have to watch them. <laughs> we know that we're not getting Intercontinental Championship uh, AJ Styles versus Jeff Hardy match unless they do just a repeat because that is scheduled for SmackDown. Kind of disappointed as as, in that. Uh, Joseph Park is there. I'm okay with it. That was the best thing I've seen in a while. I, I could be, I couldn't, I could see a situation where that match is interrupted by Retribution and gets put into mm. SummerSlam instead. But, but AJ now. hasn't worked a pay per view since 
um, maybe Money in the Bank. There's a little bit of me that thinks that that's if they're going to do anything where Retribution forces a match to be, well, we're going to redo it and it's going to be on a pay-per-view. Part of me thinks that they're going to do that and not do it on SummerSlam, but they're going to do that on Payback too and have uh, really milk it for what it's worth by having 90% of the match on SmackDown. Retribution comes out, causes some kind of problem, and then it becomes like, well, I don't know what's going to happen here. We'll find out next week. And then the next episode of SmackDown is Jeff Hardy going, you know, I got screwed out of having this match the first time. And then this time I got screwed. So I want a match where we uh, make sure that we can do this or whatever. And that's going to be a payback. I think that that might be one of the hooks of payback. They're really into these rematch type things lately where somebody has a match, then somebody goes, yeah, but again <laughs> and then they go all right you know like uh mvp and apollo Crews. we'll get into that a little bit later too um another match i think that is a chance and it would be the type of thing that i would not have been okay with this until monday night raw happened and we're gonna do a deeper dive on this on the uh hot tags but mickey james versus natalia uh my my quick rundown of it is if they see the reaction that people have had where it's like, for fuck's sake, you're going to screw over Mickey that much. Maybe they're going to go, oh, we'll put it on the pre-show and have the real match there. That kind of thing. I just don't think they care enough. I, I could be wrong, but I don't think they care. Yeah. It's not like Naomi's on this card or anything. So I think they'll probably, <laughs> <laughs> they, they clearly don't care about any internet reaction to, how people screwed over so i think we'll see that match again on raw at some point but it won't be on SummerSlam. maybe they uh get around it by having mickey against naomi and naomi squashes mickey and then they go see look at that we're picking you know <laughs> that's ridiculous like what what are you gonna get out of that i think it'll be just uh mickey james is back she's not gonna do anything she's older she's here to put over younger talent so, you know, she's putting over Natalia. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I can't think of any other matches that I feel are on the bubble to be announced, but do you guys have any other suggestions of what you think that they might add? They could do Riddle versus Corbin and just get that oh. out of the way. Yeah, shit. I completely forgot about that one. They got to I mean, do that. They might, that might be a save for payback kind of thing, but they could also do whatever the next step in Big E's singles run is. Who knows? Well, Big E might be having a little bit of a feud going on with Sheamus, it seems. Uh, Sheamus and Big E are, and some other people are on SmackDown. They're kind of bouncing around all over the place. It's like uh, the Miz and Morrison, they have like a little bit of a feud going on with Heavy Machinery. And right. at the same time, they've been having matches with Big E. And then you know, Sheamus has been having this whole thing with Big E where he's like, you know, well, fuck you, I can take uh, Retribution or whatever, but Sheamus has been involved in the King Corbin and the Shorty G thing, which they're involved with Matt Riddle, and then I don't know, maybe they do some kind of uh, Big E and Heavy Machinery and Matt Riddle against Sheamus and Corbin and Shorty G and uh, I don't know, whatever, but I guess they could add any of those. Blanking on those, uh, glad you brought them up. Yeah. It's just one. It's just one of those situations where I could see all of the matches you suggested and none of the matches that you suggested going on the card. Yeah. If if they feel like they need to fill more time, they'll put those matches on. If they don't, they'll save them for payback or the next episode of Raw or SmackDown. They might but just they, limit the amount of matches because of the coronavirus too. That hasn't stopped them yet. Well, that's a good point. <laughs> well, apparently, according to uh, some reports, Vince McMahon is like, "We've got these uh, Thunderdome screens that fixes everything. We're we're good." <laughs> you know? well, I, I'm sure he's not saying it like that, but no, I'm he sure he's saying it like this fixes everything. Like, you know? <laughs> <laughs> he seems oh. happier that there there's a bigger stage, and from what I've seen, it does look way more akin to what we're used to. I did see one thing that's going around now. I don't believe in it at all, but people saying now that they've got the screens up that uh, Brock Lesnar or Roman Reigns will appear. I don't think so at all. I I mean, where would they even fit in this card? 
unless it's like uh oh. yeah, Brock interferes in the McIntyre match or something like that. But I'm not thinking that either of them are going to show up for any reason. I don't think they're still far away. It'd be great if Retribution hits the ring and Brock just destroys him and then they just get rid of the angle. <laughs> I'd be okay with that, actually. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be against that, yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I'd say they're trying to fix it by having Brock come in and be the leader of Retribution. It's just like him surrounded by a bunch of hooded guys. No, nah, I'd rather him just kill him. I know, I'd rather that as well, but I could see them just trying to say, oh, we've got to give somebody, these guys somebody, because they're just a bunch of small nerds. They're just doing petty vandalism around the arena. They seem to be getting bigger by the day though so either they're starting to slowly work in the people that they actually want to be a part of this or they just heard all the criticisms and scrapped the original people who were under the masks that whole thing is one of those elements that i I don't even know if i actually posted it yet or whatever but i've got a thing up on bleach report biggest gaps in the card and retribution and raw underground are two of them because they can't really announce retribution. They can't say like there's going to be a match and retribution is going to fight whatever. Cause first off, we don't know who's in retribution. And second, their whole gimmick is like, they're causing chaos and they're not like, you know, really supposed to be part of the way that things normally are. So I, I, I don't even need to ask the question. I know we all know that retribution's going to show up in some fashion on here. And, uh, I'm a little bit surprised that Raw Underground isn't. I think that they they missed an opportunity that they could have had some kind of fight happen on here. And even though it's not Raw... I prefer that they didn't. I think you make it exclusive to Raw and it means more. That's that's true. I guess you could go in that route. Yeah. It's not, it's not going to fit well outside of Raw. At least not yet anyway. And... I don't see anybody ready to fight that's going to make it worthwhile for a pay-per-view. Plus, we, in our big discussion, we talked about how if they start just sticking underground on everything, it's just going to get oversaturated and full of bullshit, so it's better that they don't. I do kind of feel, though, that if they would have that on SummerSlam, there's a chance that more people could tune in. Because... You know, if you're watching SummerSlam and you're a casual and you don't know that Raw Underground is a thing, maybe you go, hey, it's kind of neat. They're doing that on Raw. I'll watch that. Might be a you, you know, missed opportunity. You're assuming that more people are going to tune into SummerSlam than an episode of Raw. I don't know, because SummerSlam yeah, is one of those things. I, I think that logic's a little backwards. I yeah, think they're more, more likely going to tune into Raw and then see something they want to see at SummerSlam. I say that there's not going to be more than half a million people watching SummerSlam. It's if it was like uh, the, the payback card, I'd be fully in agreement. But I do know that there are some people out there that they do every once in a while just watch some of the big events, and they don't watch Raw, and they'll be like, "Yeah, I'll tune in for SummerSlam." Like you know, this is where I, I, I think, think SummerSlam's they... become a hardcore show too. I don't think it's like that anymore. I think WrestleMania is the only one that appeals to casuals anymore. Maybe Rumble as well, just because it's the Rumble. But I think SummerSlam usually is up there, but this particular SummerSlam card isn't, and they also didn't announce the Thunderdome with enough time for mm. you know casuals to get wind of it and go, okay, maybe maybe I'll watch that. That's true. Now, what's the card on this show? Yeah, it's it's like if if Lesnar was on it or Cena was on it, then maybe, but they're not. So even at this point, and I know he's still more of a modern guy, but even if somebody said, hey, Roman might be here. I think you'd get more eyes on it. So that's all in the realm of what if and the stuff we don't know. We do know that there are a handful of matches that uh, we're going to be breaking down here. But before we get into the actual predictions for there, Calum's going to fill us in on why these are going to matter more when we give our predictions. Yes. So previously, over the last few years at the very least, when we've been giving predictions on wrestling it's just a bit of fun just see who gets right gets wrong there's no real stakes attached to it but now at least going forward up until at least wrestlemania time depending on how well this experiment works out these predictions will matter because they're going to be part of the fantasy league which is returning for the first time in i don't know when last time you did it was uh like 2017 2018 around about that time 
I 2017, mean, I think, might be. Because I've been doing these since 2018, and I've never done this. All right, so 20, since 2017. So if those that aren't familiar with the Fantasy League, obviously some hardcore fans that have been following us for a while will be more than familiar with what the Fantasy League is. But if you haven't stopped in and weren't listening at that point in time, then the Fantasy League is we're going to be drafting a team of wrestlers to essentially be our team going forward for up until WrestleMania, making trades in between, just building just like any sort of like fantasy league squad for any other sport. And there'll be points awarded for wins, points taken away for losses, all that, all that other great jazz going to be stealing, potentially stealing uh, like wrestlers from each other's teams, all that other great stuff, all the stuff that you're used to with the fantasy league, just with a slightly tweaked scoring system and me in control of keeping, keeping the scores. And also, also the big change is the fact that we're not going to be referring to it every single week on our videos, but once a month or so, we'll give a, like, a little update video and everything else that, in terms of like tracking what's happening with the Fantasy League will take place on the Mega Maniacs. So if you haven't signed up for the Facebook group there, then make sure you check it out because any Fantasy League announcements, any trades that have taken place, any score updates will be housed mainly on there. And so, that's uh, yeah. facebook.com slash groups slash the mega maniacs. Yeah. So basically what it means in terms of the predictions is that whoever wins this predictions contest for SummerSlam gets the first pick. And then it will be a snake pattern after that. But that's why these ones are going to matter a bit more. And predictions going forward will help influence whether people get extra trades or get still uh, wrestlers from other people's teams, depending on how successful they are. But that's why the prediction is going to get a little bit more, have a few more stakes attached to it. And the first initial draft will include a live singing performance from Anthony Mango. <laughs> it might, that, I don't know. I haven't the, figured that out yet. Biggest, that's probably the biggest draw of the entire thing. So <laughs> we promised it now, so you have to deliver. Uh, I can edit that out. <laughs> then it's more work, though. And <laughs> I don't know. I might, uh, I might try to figure out a, a new rendition of the old Fantasy League outro just for this, uh, the hell of it. But, um, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna give you some more details about like the specific points breakdown and everything that goes along with that coming up in a little bit. Where this isn't, uh, you know, we're, this isn't a whole video about the fantasy league, so we're not gonna go through no. the whole big thing about that. But we will be doing the draft thing, uh, probably a little bit before we do our payback predictions next week. And of course, we gotta do that after SummerSlam because we have to figure out the whole predictions and then set the number one and the snake pattern and all that other kind of stuff too. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that means uh, predictions they they matter more for this. Yep. Predictions yeah. matter more. So yep, next week some at some point we'll be doing the fantasy league draft, as Tony says. And yeah, the first show where the points will matter will be that payback show. So we're completely different from whose line is it anyway. The points do matter. And uh, if you want to be a part of this in some fashion, we're not doing the the fantasy league as far as like having everybody else a part of the same thing. It'd be a little bit too difficult to track that and whatever. And this is, you know, kind of an experiment, of course. Callum is taking that on and he's going to be controlling all the, the points and keeping track of everything and all that stuff. So that's that's quite a bit enough to just figure out with uh, the four of us. But we encourage people to create their own sub leagues and, you know, maybe have like a, their own little discord or something following the same rules. Eventually we're going to have the whole rules breakdown and some kind of thing where people can have like an easy access to it. And, you know, I mean, uh, I would rather not see people start going crazy on the mega maniacs by posting random things about like, I would like to make a trade with whatever we got to keep sure, make that, that, that that's not the case. So maybe be a nice little... to say the group be active for once. Uh, not to be getting a notification every 20 minutes, though, that somebody's trying to trade something or whatever like that, though. We, we got to make sure that that's not happening. But maybe if people are interested, they can do some kind of separate Facebook group with each other. Maybe they can create a Discord. I know that uh, Bobby Lesnar was interested in taking part of something like this. So, like, uh, by all means, if you want to kind of take the the point system and apply it and, you know, get like, uh, you know, Peter, if you're interested or... Um, you know, guess five or you know, any other people. I mean, I'm not going to name everybody who's like a regular, but like, you know, essentially we're going to give you more information about that over the coming week or so. But I wanted to set that up ahead of time. So that way you knew that, you know, when somebody says, 
I think so and so is going to beat so and so. That there's there's weight behind it. It's not just uh, shooting the shit for the sake of it. So we got uh, it's eight matches I think right now that we can kind of base this off of. And you know, if we adjust things later on in the week, then that'll play into it. But let's go with one that I think that we're all going to kind of go in the same direction for here: the hair versus hair match, Mandy Rose against Sonya Deville. The purpose of this, of course, is if you lose, you get head shaved. And we've gotten Mandy Rose take a little bit of a haircut that turned into a super cute haircut, as I referred to it the other day. Just thought oh, so cute. I uh, hate when people talk like no, that. No, what do you mean? Miz and Morrison clearly said she looks like an ogre. Uh, you know, it's cute. she goes from uh, super long hair to slightly shoulder, less long man. hair. And, uh, you know, there's people that would pay hundreds of dollars to get that haircut. And that becomes the type of thing where it's like, oh, my God, it's terrible. It's like uh, that thing in Not Another Teen Movie where they're like, oh, she can't be prom queen. She's got glasses and a ponytail and paint on her overalls. Oh, come on, guys. <laughs> like that kind of thing. You take off the glasses, you put the hair down, and she's a knockout. You know, it's like they even put up today a thing of check out Mandy Rose's new hairstyle. Doesn't she look fantastic? And it's like, yeah, that's really defeating the purpose of this. But, you know, there's serious percussions out of this that uh, play into the real world. We'll get into this more next uh, on the hot tags, of course, but did not expect this to be the situation where it's like, let's cut Mandy Rose's hair and she'll look exactly the same and set up a hair versus hair match. And Sonya will end up getting, you know, a potential kidnapping and whatever. So <laughs> I still think they're going to stick with the idea that I had said before. I, this seems like this is made and Taylor made for Sonya Deville to lose. And she wants to do this daddy Deville character. She wants to, you know, be upping the intensity with a lot of things. I'm fully expecting Mandy Rose is not going to be bald by the end of SummerSlam. So I'm going yeah, I'm Mandy. In agreement. <laughs> it's like hard to be, for me to see Mandy Rose with a bald head. Right. Plus like there's a track record. Heels typically lose this match and it's for a good reason. Um, it's more humiliating, and it's like it's weird to just laugh at a humiliated baby face. It's a lot more of a payoff to do it to a heel. So, yeah, Sonya's getting shaved. Yep. Yeah. yeah, I'd have to be in agreement with that one as well. I'm, I'm I'm looking forward to the match itself because I think it's going to be pretty aggressive and fiery between the two of them. But at the end of it, it's Sonya's going to be the one that's getting ahead shaved. And I think Plus, actually... I think she can pull it off, right? Oh yeah, I think this is going to yeah, be. Absolutely. It's going to be humiliating, obviously, to start with because of just the that's what you're trying to get out of this match. But I think she's going to actually revel in that new look. There's a and chance then... that if they can pull off this whole eventually taking the title off of Bailey type of thing, that maybe Sonya becomes the next heel to beat whoever the baby face is that, you know, well, Sasha Banks essentially. Yeah, you know, this could be the thing that really makes or breaks her career, I think. I think uh, they did the right thing here with this rivalry. They've been, it's been a long drawn out story since like there were still fans in the arena when they were doing the whole Otis and Mandy and Dolph and Sonia. And they didn't drag it out for too long like Sasha and Bailey. They had a logical payoff and Sonia gets her head shaved. I think it's going to be a win win for everybody involved. What's weird is you would think that it would be like, oh, no, Sonya Deville's going to get her head shaved and that's going to suck or whatever like that. But I feel like the one who's going to come out of this with nothing is Mandy, because then what does she do? Yeah, she's officially going to hit like, OK, you had the baby face turn, you plateaued and now you're a baby face with no direction. Welcome to the void. We uh, were talking ahead of time about how the baby faces tend to win these kind of matches. And Eugene is one of the only ones that we came across that we could find that was actually a baby face at the time. Was Molly Holly? I don't remember. I yeah, wasn't watching Molly Holly them. was a heel. Yeah, she was definitely a heel. And they only did that hair versus hair match on WrestleMania because she begged and pleaded to actually have the match at WrestleMania. And she said she saved her head just to have that match at WrestleMania. To have a wrestling match. Because they pre Not and the stuff that she did like after getting her head shaved on TV was great. She's one of the best people to play it off. Molly's fantastic. So we're all going Mandy Rose there. Um not surprised. 
no. It's going to be a bit awkward now with the Fantasy League thing if everyone just has the same predictions and got yeah. bored. <laughs> Wait, do you think... Oh, Otis is still here. He still has a briefcase. Is he cashing in at SummerSlam? On anything? Uh... I'm going to go say no. I, I don't think that they have any idea whatsoever of what to do with Otis right now, let they, alone they with the money in the bank. Oh, 100%. They, yeah, they, they have no figured plans. They've stepped in it. Yeah, they figured, wouldn't it be funny if he's the one who's holding the briefcase at the end of the night and then nobody s- stepped up on the creative committee and said, yeah, but then what? Because they didn't plan it out. And then it just becomes, oh, look at that. <laughs> he's standing on the briefcase, uh, on the ladder with a briefcase. All right, well, that's a thing. How about you go fuck that. off for a while? <laughs> Yeah, it, it just was, sort of fell in his hand. Yeah, it fell in his hand when he was on the floor. He didn't even get up the ladder in the first. That's true. Time. Yeah. So, <laughs> but I think I think they will eventually come to their senses, and sometime around about Survivor Series, they'll be making a plan about how they're going to get someone else to hold the briefcase rather than notice. Somebody's got to take it from him because if not, the idea that he's going to just beat Strowman or Wyatt or whatever, it's not going to happen. And especially when you get like closer to where it would lead towards WrestleMania like this, they're not doing anything with the guy. So it's not like they're, you know, they're keeping him around and they're using him in anything to, to build him up to where it would make sense. He's not actually, he's less credible now. I was going to say he's not uh, any more credible. He's less credible than he was when he first won it. They don't seem to have any real direction with him. And it's a real shame because you know what? Maybe it would even be like better and so no, no, it wouldn't be in the long run, but we're talking like Mandy Rose might have nothing to do. There is one story that they could tell, which is Mandy gets her head shaved and has to learn how to be something other than her looks like this whole thing that Sonya is talking about. And it's like, you know, oh, uh, Otis isn't even going to love me anymore because I have my head shaved. Like they could do something like that. It's not the craziest idea in the world, but. I don't think that they want to have Mandy Rose have no can hair. Otis give his briefcase away to somebody? I I guess. Could he give it to her? I think he already is giving it to her, isn't it? That's part hey. of I don't think that that would work as much because of the idea that, uh, you know, it's like the men's and the women's briefcase yeah. things. Would it be, would it be funny though? Like, who gives a shit? Would it, would it be funny if uh, Mandy that what would lose her have the head shaved and then Otis just isn't interested in her anymore. And that's kind of like this total reverse of the original mm-hmm. storyline. But Mandy was the one that Otis was the one in the end that was superficial. <laughs> Instead of the oh yeah good. he just comes out and he's like oh no oh no Tucker not a fan anymore. Tucker I'm not coming I still can't believe they had him sitting there doing that. Um, yeah, so Mandy, 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 Mandy. Um, let's go over to the Raw Tag Team Championship. The Street Profits are defending against Andrade and Angel Garza. We now know the thing that we knew already, but they did the whole confirmation. Zelina Vega was the one responsible for poisoning Montez Ford. It's wrestling so freaking stupid. You got all this whole like. The retribution thing where you're like, oh, who are these people? They're attacking things. And I don't know. It's going to happen. Like, no, fucking security would be arresting people and whatever. It's not just I like. Mean, look at look at who's wrestling on the card. Dominic uh, Dominic Mysterio, who once had his custody in a ladder match. Yeah. And you got like uh, the fiend is this like wizardy type of character. And you got all this other kind of shit like that. But you also have like. A manager can just poison their enemy Where and be are like, those "Cops that were so determined to arrest Jeff Hardy a couple months ago." Right? The, like, they get video footage of Vega doing it. Somebody's watching it happen. They're like, "You know, she uh, she just put something in Montez Ford's drink. Maybe we should do something about it." Nah, it's wrestling. We're and Marty Jannetty was so comfortable admitting to the murders, he just thought there was no consequences. <laughs> oh, there you go. I'm surprised that, that it's not it. like uh, they didn't add some kind of stipulation to it to where it's like, you know, a poison versus poison match or something like that. Pick your poison match. I don't know. But that's... Patreon, anyone? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, 
that's that's the thing that we we got going into this. We've had more than enough matches between these two tag teams over the course of the past few months. The uh, Street Profits defended the titles at WrestleMania against uh, Zelina Vegas crew. Austin Theory was in the mix at the time instead of uh, Andrade and Angel Garza. He replaced Andrade. But, you know, we've been having these two teams and uh, Zelina and Bianca feuding since April, March, you know, somewhere around that. It's time to end it. And the only way for it to really end, it seems, is if Andrade and Angel Garza win because Street Profits have beaten them countless times and it just becomes, well, they just keep having more matches. So I'm hoping if they just go with the Street Profits that they've got a plan of what to do afterward. But I don't see anything other than potentially the Hurt Business uh, being the next feud. So I'm going to go Andrade and Angel Garza win the titles. The fact that this was a WrestleMania match and they had other options and yet they stuck to it again for this and they've wrestled a few times on Raw as well, I have to think we're going to just go with what we were going to go with originally and it's Angel and Andrade win the Raw Tag Team titles at SummerSlam. Yeah, I think it's going to have to end up being Andrade and Angel as well. I just... I don't really see. I, I don't think there's a huge. It's a huge lead to suggest the two profits just retain because they don't ever have a plan for the tag team division. So they just flip a coin at the start of the day, and then whoever has the right result wins it. But I think they might just want to freshen it up because they have held the titles for quite a long time now. And so give it to Andrade and Angel Garza. Have a few baby face teams go after them instead. There's other stuff you can do with the Street Profits in the meantime. But yeah, so I'll go with Andrade and Angel as well. Whatever happened to the tentacle creature from Backlash? Anybody? That was a tag team thing. What what happened to the tentacle creature? Maybe that's uh, in retribution. <laughs> uh, I got Andre and uh, Gaza winning uh, this, but I think they're going to drop the titles back to them uh, to the Street Profits on payback. Oh, motherfucker. That's terrible. <laughs> That would be very WWE to be like, all right, all right, the feud's ending. We got f- four months out of this, and now we're gonna do a rematch. <laughs> and it would be like, God damn it, because you know how like the Kevin Owens and stuff, uh, Sammy Rain, Sammy Reigns, Seth, God, I'm all over the place, Sammy Zayn, uh, <laughs> thing. I've, I've said Kevin Owens versus Seth Rollins so much that I started to mix those two together and stuff. You know, that was like, all right, we we've had a hundred matches. This is our last match ever until next week, kind of a thing. <laughs> Yeah. Well, we mentioned uh, picking your poison. That's uh, yeah, time for a little plug out there. There is the pick your poison tier on the Patreon, and if you have not checked out the Patreon, then that is the thing where you can request some kind of a special feature or a podcast or anything like that. So, uh, you know, if you want us to do something that we haven't done in a while, or you want us to do something extra throughout the week, then if you donate to that tier, then you get to request whatever that is for that topic and. I don't think that there's been a situation so far where somebody's requested something that we didn't do. We've uh, tweaked a couple things here and there where it ended up being like, oh, that might be better for like a fan ounce table rather than a review or that kind of thing. But, you know, typically speaking, it's like, hey, can you guys do this? And then it's like, well, yeah, you, you bankrolled it. So there you go. Uh, but even a dollar goes a long way, especially with the idea that I had mentioned before that I really would love to upgrade to a WordPress dedicated thing going on instead of the way that I have the website set up right now. And that is going to cost probably about $2,000 to do. So, yeah, uh, if uh, if every person who was subscribed on the YouTube channel donated one dollar this month, then I would have the ability to do that because there's more than 2000 people that are subscribed. So definitely consider it i mean i know that uh, money is something that is not just growing on trees for everybody uh for anybody for that matter unless somebody's got a money tree out there which if that's the case uh give me a seed and um you know spare change does not come around easy in this era but if you happen to have it and if you want to help out then that is awesome and you are an awesome person for it five bucks is basically ad bo- uh, ad block forgiveness because of the way that YouTube is and the way that all the other kind of things are. I mean, I got a notice yesterday that said my revenue on the website went down 8%, which is uh, a measly, like, I don't even get $100 a month for the website. So that's another, you know, thing to keep in mind. Um, But 
if you want to donate to the dark cast here, it's $10 and higher gives you access to the Patreon exclusive episodes that we have on there at least once a month. And we've been having some more of them lately because Rob and Callum have been doing some pay-per-view reviews as part of a special thing for the Paul Heyman Smackdown podcast. And, you know, I mean, there's the mailbag priority tier and there's, you know, some other kind of things that are in the mix there. So the Patreon is the best way to directly fund the whole operation that we've got going on here. And I might as well just get these plugs out of the way while we're at it. Another way to do that is the merchandise shops. Those are T Public and Redbubble. Now, I don't get a whole lot of a percentage of any of those sales, but, uh, you know, every little bit helps, as I said. So even if you're buying a sticker and I get 10 cents, you know, if you, people buy a shit ton of stickers, you ends up adding up, you know. Pennies lead to dollars and, um, you know, a T-shirt or a hoodie or whatever like that. Everything that's higher up, of course, there's a higher percentage or so. And, you know, I think a T-shirt ends up being like a two dollars or something like that. But, uh, you know, if you check out the Fanboys Anonymous, the Smart Cat Moment and the A Mango Tees shops on those two different sites, Redbubble's got a lot of options. Tee Public has a lot of options. There's merchandise all over the place and there's different products that you can apply the merchandise to. So check that out. And if you don't know what Fanboys Anonymous is and why I mentioned that, it's the site that I do all the movie reviews and geek culture topics over on. So if you want more of that kind of content, you have to directly sponsor that because that is something that I don't get that much of a, uh, an opportunity to do. So I will be doing some kind of a post on Lucifer season five, I think is what it is. It's uh, coming out tomorrow or Friday or so. I'm hoping to try to binge yeah, watch that coming out. Yeah, so it's uh, eight episodes of that. I'm going to try to binge that and put up some kind of a review up on uh, Fanboys. But if you want more Fanboys Anonymous content, the merchandise shops and the Patreon are the best way to make sure that we do that. So, plugs out of the way for that kind of stuff. More plugs coming up in the future. Woo! Let's go with the street fight. We've got Seth Rollins, not Sammy Reigns, <laughs> and uh, Dominic Mysterio, who's now part of the roster. We... They got this whole switch over. That's a street fight because I guess they figured that that would be a little bit easier for them to wrestle that match. And we've got Murphy's going to be ringside, I'm sure. Austin Theory still missing in action. Not sure what's happening with that. But Rey Mysterio is, is back. Had, didn't he get an off-screen suspension? Like they said, like they've not announced that he's a suspended, but that's what the deal is. Correct. Uh, is that? Uh, I must have missed that report. I just thought that he was just like you know doing something else. I don't know, or staying home for COVID or something. Did they suspend him for the whole allegations and stuff? Because yep. I don't remember too much going crazy about that, but I know that his name got dropped. His name oh, got he... dropped. They suspended him off screen. Well, and we show uh, how much a suspension works when it comes to Nia Jax. <laughs> Is it a speak? Was it a speaking out allegation? Or... It was. It was a speaking out allegation. Okay. Yeah, I never heard that part. All I know is um, Dave Meltzer said, but he got. Uh, Suspended very quietly. He's going to come back with a repackaging. He's going to be Austin Hypothesis. Watch. It'll happen. They're not that clever. Yeah, I am. I'm just tired. <laughs> I said they're not that clever. You're not that clever. You're no. clever, Tony. <laughs> I think said you're not that clever. Oh, then again, there we go. More proof that I'm tired. I'm mixing up uh, words. Sammy Reigns. Anyway, uh, Dominic Mysterio, he's got a lot of kendo stick stuff going on recently. He has, he took what, I think they said it was 30 kendo stick shots that one day. That sucks. And Seth Rollins took like three and was like, nah, fuck this, I'm leaving. <laughs> but um, I am not a fan of kendo sticks anymore. I've gotten well past the point that they matter unless you're doing something like those 30 shots. And I don't want to see a match where it's like, let's fuck around for five minutes with who's going to get a kendo stick. And then people hit each other with kendo sticks at the end of the match. If that's going to be the case, this match is going to be awful. And I'm not all that into that, but I am interested in the idea that maybe Dominic is going to actually wrestle a match. I think I'd like this better if it wasn't a street fight, actually. I prefer that it's a straight fight just because if Dominic's got any shortcomings, they're going to be able to cover them up. 
Uh, street fights can be good if it is going to be more than just kendo sticks, like you said. We've seen so much of it, you become numb to it, and it's not like they even crack each other in the head with them, so it's just, uh, they're underwhelming. It's weird seeing Dominic in a wrestling role after seeing that little kid on television so many years ago. Um, kind of pumped for this one just because of that. Um, also, I'm a big Eddie Mark, so remembering that story always uh, made me laugh because it's one of the more ridiculous wrestling uh, storylines we've had. I think Seth's going to win. Um, I don't see them putting Dominic over him, but I'm interested to see what he can do. I think the fact that this is a street fight means that we're not really seeing a one-on-one -on -one match between Seth Rollins and Donny Mysterio. We're seeing Dominic and Rey Mysterio versus Seth Rollins and Buddy Murphy mm -hmm. in a tag team match instead, which might help cover up any of uh, Dominic's shortcomings if he does have any still, because this is his first match officially on a WWE scale of things. I assume he's done a lot of training beforehand, so I assume that he's competent, and the stuff that he has had to do with Brock Lesnar and Seth Rollins, it's not like he's done terribly in any regard so i don't have low expectations for this and i think it'll be pretty good i just don't see any reason why it shouldn't be i i'm in two minds about who's going to win though because it could be if they really think that dominic has something about him a win over rollins on summer slam if it is assisted with, by mysterio ray mysterio could be okay that's a big launching pad for him makes him like an official part of the roster immediately but if they have other plans, I don't know what plans they have for Seth Rollins going forward other than to just be this character, which I don't like. So I think the logic telling me that Rollins is going to win. So I'll go with Rollins as my official prediction for it. I'm going to say this match starts with a lot of teasing, but it ultimately ends up with Dominic joining Seth Rollins and being the shit out of Ray. I think it ends up with, with a three on one. Where they just beat the shit out of Rey Mysterio. I love the Eddie Guerrero storyline. I don't want them to let that go. I like that in canon, you know, Eddie was Dominic's father and he can always go back to that. And I think that'd be a good way to start Dominic's career is to just pay that off. So I'm kind of over the, that's so over the top, but I'd love it. It'd be kind I'm of funny if they it. acknowledged it in a way where they he's like, do you see how much taller I am? <laughs> like, just, <laughs> it can't possibly be your kid, that kind of thing. I, you know, but I, I really think that this has to have a payoff of Dominic is with Seth Rollins all along. Like, he saw the light with the whole kendo stick beating. You, there's so many different ways you can play this off. And I think in the end, it's going to be uh, Dominic is with Seth Rollins. So That's the light not... got traumatized. It'd be quite on the nose if Rollins comes out wearing I'm your puppy t-shirt. That'd be amazing. They need to do it. Just go there. That's, I, have to, I have to say, Rob, just based on this, that's not really in a prediction. Well, okay, my prediction is well, that would Seth be Rollins, Rollins would kind of win then, I guess, right? Yeah, Seth Rollins wins both in the match and mentally. But what about just, if there isn't a fall and it's just a beat down in the end of the segment? Uh, no one believes. We all win. <laughs> it, it's all thrown now. It's all it's all ridiculous at that point. Kind of like I the uh, uh, Asuka and Sasha Banks thing from Extreme yeah, Rules. Yeah. I'm gonna say Dominic wins. Wow, oh, he's gonna he's got he's going what rogue. Yeah, I think that they're going to play into this as Rey Mysterio helps make all the difference and they get their their win over on that. And then it becomes like, because uh, WWE loves to just say, yeah, but do it again. Then it becomes, okay, yeah, you know, you beat me in that street fight because I was nice enough to give you the kendo stick or whatever. But what are you going to do when you can't have your dad ringside and you can't use a weapon? So we're going to fight in a just regular one-on-one -on -one match at Payback. And then stopping Rey Mysterio from being... At ringside in a one-on-one -on -one match. Is it's it a cage just, match? Or is it just... No, he just fucking says it and people just go, dude, because it's a wrestling match, God damn it! Remember how earlier this year we had uh, Orton versus Edge and then we said, yeah, but the follow-up is normal. <laughs> 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 I, 
So I think that they just do that. And then they'll try to market it, of course, as what's Dominic going to do when Ray's not there? Oh, man, I don't know. Uh, you know, what do you think? Whatever. He's going to actually have to wrestle know. in a wrestling match. He's handling himself very well. I'm not denying that this could happen. I'm just saying it's yeah. pretty lame. Oh, definitely on the lame side. But I think that that's, that's the direction they're going to go. So um, my prediction is going to be Dominic. Uh, speaking of the idea of a match not happening and then continuing and then saying, yeah, but again. Apollo Cruz is defending the United States Championship against MVP. Reason I why? I think you're too hard on this. Oh, it's, it's ridiculous. It's they were supposed to have this match. They've wrestled a bunch of times before that, and then of course they couldn't have the match because of Cruz not being there for COVID reasons. But they knew this full well going into that for like a good two, three weeks or so, and didn't bother to just do something else. They had a built-in thing of a forfeit so they could have given mvp the championship but instead they made it a point to have him come out say i win by forfeit that makes me champion and walk away and then them go no it doesn't and then eventually they do the cruise versus mvp match on raw and immediately afterward they go yeah but rematch fuck that they should have just had the match here and never done it on raw or done the match on Raw, and then this should have been Apollo Crews versus Bobby Lashley. So at this point, I'm thinking you've got two options, essentially. You have Crews win again, and it's just milking the hell out of it, and then they'll probably do Crews versus Lashley at Payback, or they just, the way to get around it is to just have MVP win. So I'm I'm kind of 50-50 on it, but my prediction is going to be Apollo Crews and that they just don't have it in their head right now to see this problem with repeats. They just love copying and pasting, and I think in their mind, that's okay. So you're saying the two options in this match are one guy wins or the <laughs> other guy wins? <laughs> Well, I mean, essentially what it's that, but I mean, it's not going to be the type of thing where it's like MVP wins and the plan all along was that they were going to have this match yeah. happen here or whatever. I think it's just sort of like, I don't know, we've had Cruz win a bunch of times. How about we have MVP win and then we'll figure it out from there. Like, I, I don't think that they've thought this out. No, they haven't. And uh, if Cruz wins, I think that they continue on with the Lashley type thing anyway. And this is just like, we got payback coming up. So that's an easy thing to do that. And Let's get two matches out of this by repeating the MVP thing as opposed to doing Cruz versus Lashley here and then not knowing what to do at Payback. I think that they're really, really looking at maybe the only work that they're really doing at this point in a lot of ways is to try to go, what can we do multiple times to just stretch shit out? This year has been horrendous with that. And even though I like uh, Cruz as champion and I like MVP driving this whole feud and stuff, I'm just, I want him to move on. You know, I'd rather be seeing Cedric Alexander turn heel and fight Apollo Cruz for the title, or I'd rather see just the, the Lashley and Cruz match that they keep building up. Just do that, you know, or shit, anything. Like, just at this point, it's been enough time. Let's move on from Cruz versus MVP. On the spirit of rematches, much like the Andrade Gaza and uh, Street Profits thing, I could totally see WWE having the title sir go to MVP on this one and then back to Cruz at Payback, just because it's going to happen in one of those matches. So I'm going to go ahead and say MVP wins. I'm going to go ahead and say MVP wins because Cedric Alexander turns heel and joins the Hurt Business. So, yeah, they've also got the uh, gimmick that no one can interfere from the Hurt Business, so somebody's probably going to join. Yeah. So they've got to get can... around us somehow. So Shelton and Lashley can't interfere, but Cedric has been pissed off for a while. MVP's been recruiting him. Cedric was snubbed by Apollo on Monday. So I think Cedric joins here, and MVP is U.S. champion. I'm going with Apollo winning. They've established pretty pretty heavily in the matches they've had that Apollo is better than MVP at this point. And I think that this is just get that out of the way, have Bobby Lashley attack post-match, and that sets them up for the, whether it's a payback or whether it's later on down the road, 
apologise losing that title to MVP. No, losing that title to Bobby Lashley, not MVP. Well, you know, it's the one thing I can say about Raw is I've enjoyed the Hurt Business. That's been a nice surprise. I like Shelton. I like Lashley. MVP was supposed to retire, and actually he's been a bright spot ever since he opted against that. So, yeah. So it's, uh, what, two for Cruz, two for MVP? Yes. I think so. Can. Let's kind of lump these two together. The Raw Women's Championship match is Sasha Banks against Asuka, and the SmackDown Women's Championship match is Bayley versus Asuka. So... Empress of Tomorrow may win both championships, or just one, or neither of them. Uh, Why do you want to lump these together, but everybody doesn't want to, doesn't like my idea of, hey, let's just merge the fucking women's titles at this point. Oh, it's there's not that no, I don't like it, I just think that they're not going to do it. There, There's no need for more than one WWE women's champion right now. No, there isn't. Absolutely. I mean, they've fully just said... All they care about is the golden role models type thing. And I'm of the opinion, of course, that I think that they have dragged that out far too long. We've talked about this a million times, so I'm not going to just repeat myself, you know, over and over and over again. But, you will at some point in the next uh, couple of months, but uh, go ahead. It's just, uh, you know, it's been two plus years. They don't want to do it. They're dragging it out. They should have been at WrestleMania. It should have been last year. It should have been the year before that, whatever. So... I think that they gave the belt to Sasha just to give themselves an extra month. And I think that they have had more than enough evidence to back up that Vince is super into this Bailey character, even though I personally am not to the point where I can't see her dropping the title, especially because if she drops her title, then the whole setup of the Sasha Banks thing is worthless. I know that they can technically do something like Bailey loses hers and Sasha retains hers and Bailey is mad and she goes after Sasha and they do something like that. But to me, it's never seemed as big of a deal if the reverse happens. It's almost always better if the baby face or the underdog or whatever it is, is going to fight the champion as opposed to the babyface is the champion and the heel that is the driving force is just mad and is going to lose so i expect bailey to walk out of this as champion and for banks to lose the title because they have set up that there's oscar versus Shayna baszler in the future oscar was kind of supposed to be a pretty decent deal when she won that title from Becky Lynch, like they sort of put her over as like, you need to be the flagship person right now. And they've been not booking her all that well. I mean, she had that whole count out thing with Nia. Then they did the thing with uh, Sasha winning the title title and all that. But I feel like there's too much going on. That makes sense that if they go with anything other than Oscar leaving as raw women's champion, I'll be incredibly shocked. And if they have Bailey lose her title, I'll be incredibly shocked. So I'm going Asuka beats Banks, and I'm not interested in the match because I've seen it enough. Same thing for Asuka and Bailey. It's just I skipped to the end. Who cares? And I haven't quite decided yet if I think Bailey is going to beat Asuka or if Bailey's going to lose by count out or DQ. But I guess for the sake of the predictions, I'll say Bailey wins that match. So Asuka and then Bailey. For my predictions, I've got well, we know Bailey. that Oscar is going to fight Bailey first because they said that on Raw. So I think DQ there. The match with Banks starts immediately. Bailey accidentally costs Sasha the match. There's tension going into Payback. They lose the belt to Payback to whoever, and then finally at some. Maybe Hell in a Cell. Maybe they're just waiting for October at this point. But we're going to get Banks and Bailey before the year is over. I've got the opposite of Tony. I've got Bailey defeating um, Oscar. Sorry, um, I've got uh, Oscar defeating Bailey and Sasha. Sorry. We're... I totally wrote my predictions all fucked up. <laughs> I've got uh, Bailey defeating Oscar and um, Sasha Banks. Uh, 
I got the opposite of Tony. I'm sorry. I'm all fucked up. <laughs> you got Banks. You got Banks guy. retaining and Bailey losing. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> I'm getting all tongue tied and it's not coming out. So but who's gonna? You could... Who's gonna win between Oscar and Sammy Reigns? <laughs> <laughs> Sammy Reigns, obviously. <laughs> Now, why do you think that they're going to have the title still stick around on Sasha, but not on Bailey? Because I think they're going to do the whole thing where Bailey's got resentment against Sasha Banks, and that's going to lead to the turn. Well, not turn, but turning uh, Sasha Banks when Bailey turns on her. Uh, what do you got? In terms of my ones, uh, especially now that it's confirmed that Bailey and Asuka are going first, I think Bailey wins due to Sasha interfering on Bailey's behalf. And then Bailey tries to do the same to Sasha Banks. It screws up. Sasha Banks ends up losing the title because of the interference. They the cracks start to form. They, as Rob says, they drop the titles at payback. And then they continue to be a team until at least I think Survivor Series is when the break is going to happen because it'll be in a, like in a um some sort of women's the five on five tag match or something like that. But now that he says Survivor Series. There is the other option of, well, if you just keep the belts on these girls, they have to fight at Survivor Series. Yeah, but that's really, is that, is that really what you're going to be building towards? Like all this, this like, this, like as Tony says, like this two years of build, and the only reason they're fighting is because they're forced to. It's like, yes. that's, 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 <laughs> that, 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 I mean, that would be a very yeah. WWE way of doing it, but um, I, I'm at least hoping that at some point they'll just, that'll be the breaking point and. I still don't see this match happening until uh, at least TLC uh, or when it, whatever the December pay per view is, but uh, that that's when I think that the first match will happen. It would shock me if it just doesn't happen. Oh yeah, there's a good chance. Oh, there's a good chance that that break happens and then Sasha gets injured and then they just mm-hmm. have to wait forever. Oh yeah. Like oh fuck. But, but now I'm thinking. Yeah. There's a part of me that thinks that they literally think, "Why don't we try to make this go until WrestleMania?" <laughs> I'm not a, if they feel like okay we're getting on track with fans being we can do fans at WrestleMania. Uh, Sasha Banks and Bailey is a WrestleMania match. It's just that they've run out of stuff to do in the meantime. They ran out of stuff a fucking year ago. <laughs> it's just... Well, I, I think, and I've said this before, the no fans era saved Bailey for me. She got to be a little more charismatic, just bouncing off of. Sasha and picking on Michael Cole that I like the character way more than I did in January, February. So it's not, wouldn't be the worst thing to continue dragging it out. It's just, you've run out of ideas. There's like a big disparity with that whole Bailey character for me and a lot of other people. I don't see all these positives. I think that she's uh, annoying in a non heel way, like you know, the, yeah, the but... term X Pac heat. Like, I just I don't find it like, oh man, I want her to get her ass kicked. I'm like, oh my god, this segment's going on for fucking ever, you know. Hey, Tony, welcome to everyone on Baron Corbin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. That's so weird. I don't know, I don't get it. The Baron Corbin uh, stuff to me, it. like, it seems like. From my perspective, it seems like he's just like a regular heel. Like I and Bailey, what I don't get about her is I get this feeling that she's trying way too hard. That's, you know? what, that's what I that's what I love about it. Yeah, that's part of what that's that's part of what I love about it is the fact that she she's not well she's she's taking the role seriously as a heel, but she's not taking herself seriously and she's being over the top and she's being over dramatic. It's the same thing that Kurt Angle would do or another like whiny and bitchy heels would do. They do stuff where they're really putting themselves out to be looking like fools constantly, even though they think that they're the best that there's ever been. Whereas Corbin, yeah. I think, just feels like he thinks that he's good and actually wins a lot of the time. So that actually is just reinforcing that. Maybe it's cringy a... and del- Bailey's cringy deliberately. Corbin's just cringy by mistake. Mm. Maybe that's that what that's what I don't like about it though. Maybe because I'm not a fan of like slapstick humor or the type of thing that like um I forget like the term for it, but it's the whole like it's so bad that it's good. I don't like that kind of stuff. I don't like when you watch like an awkward thing and you're supposed to laugh at how awkward it is. Nine times out of ten, I don't think that it's funny. I just feel annoyed so 
like the Baron Corbin thing, he's supposed to be taken seriously, and maybe that's why it translates better for me. I don't know. I'm just sick and tired of it. I, I like I, I would be fine despite the illogical nature of the whole thing. I'd be fine if Oscar won both belts. And then they just said, you know what, fuck it, we're just not gonna have Banks and Bailey fuck off for a while and focus on Oscar against uh, I don't know uh, Jesse Camilla. I'd be like, good, it's something different. Move on. You know, but I'm gonna go. Banks uh, loses. Bailey retains. Same. Yeah, that's that's my same one. Hang on, that's not what your prediction was, Rob. Your prediction was that the Bailey got de- uh, Bailey gets DQ'd, but she retains. But that's two Oscar wins. <laughs> yeah, I mean, technically that would be an Oscar win. You got to say Oscar yeah. wins. Oh, take well, this seriously, Oscar... Rob. Yeah, take this seriously, Rob. <laughs> Sorry, Oscar wins. Sorry. Oscar these predictions ma- these predictions matter now, Rob. We have to take this seriously. <laughs> okay. All right. So even if I'm wrong and Oscar doesn't So even if I'm wrong and Oscar doesn't win the championship off Bailey, she could still win by DQ, so right. real look out. Yeah. This is where retribution comes in. <laughs> yeah, no. Retribution's gonna interfere in the Bailey and Oscar match. Yeah, that sounds like <laughs> the right way of doing it. Uh, you find out that it's actually been banks all along, right? In retribution. Yeah. Um, Universal Championship match. We've got Braun Strowman against the Fiend. Who knows what's happening with this? Uh, Alexa Bliss gets attacked by the Fiend, and then Braun Strowman goes, "I don't give a shit." And then <laughs> the Fiend's like, "I do." It's uh, yeah. I guess they're trying to do a double turn. I'm not feeling it. Uh, I was so much more before they started doing this whole thing with. Strowman not caring about Alexa and Alexa being a part of this and all that. I'm, I'm kind of thinking that they're going to try to turn Wyatt babyface, and uh, I don't think that that's going to work out. Kind of thinking that they're going to try to do something with Alexa getting involved in this, that it might be overbooked. I don't like the idea that Strowman might be a heel going forward because I don't think that there are strong baby faces for him to fight going forward. I don't think that Bray Wyatt as a baby face makes sense for the title situation. For that matter, I don't think that Bray Wyatt winning the title and staying a heel and Braun Strowman staying a babyface works out all that well. I kind of feel like they don't have any possible options that are going to be great over the next couple of months, depending on how they do this. So I'm a huge uh, Braun Strowman fan, and I would rather him retain the title and have a bad situation come out of that than for him to lose the title in a bad situation to come out. So I don't think it's going to happen, though. Um, ultimately, whether it's Alexa Bliss helping Wyatt out or Alexa Bliss costing Braun Strowman the match or a babyface and heel turn switch or something, I think that Bray Wyatt's going to win this title and that they're just reverting back to the status quo because Braun Strowman was not their plan to be the champion. He was the emergency backup. They've had him had the title reign from WrestleMania up until SummerSlam. It's very standard. They can't complain at that point and be like, you know, wow, well, you're using him as a transitional thing. No. I mean, he feuded with two people, but that's long enough for them to justify it. And you go back to Bray Wyatt and they just act like the whole past year didn't happen. I'm going Wyatt wins the title. Wyatt wins the title and gets Alexa Bliss in like a Harley Quinn type of role. And it's a shame because Braun Strowman has more direction in the last seven days than he's had since winning the Universal title. And it seems like they're finally going somewhere with Braun. But I will say, maybe we're starting to look towards, hey, Roman, listen, we're doing more testing, got this Thunderdome thing. Can you do it? Maybe maybe we're ready for Roman Reigns to just come in and take this title from whoever. But I think Wyatt wins this match. The one thing WWE is good at is consistently kicking the Fiend's legs from out from under him. So I've got Braun Strowman winning this. Don't uh, it, don't forget though how many times Braun Strowman was passed over. They had like at least a dozen, it seems title matches where it was like, oh, Braun's got to win the title now. Then they were like, ha-ha, never mind. You know? 
Yeah, you're right, but they've got no one else, and so they've got to settle with Braun at this point. I'm really intrigued by this match, even though I know it's going to suck. Them just an in-ring product because these two guys just don't produce good matches, I don't think. And so the match itself might be too good. The Alexa aspect has added a bit of interest to it, where it previously was like the Swamp Fight and all this other stuff, and the Sweater Bray Wyatt and that stuff just held, held no interest for me. I think there's one of two things that are going to happen. One guy's going to win, or one other guy's going to win. Go Tony Man, go. But no, it's um. I think that it's either going to be the double turn is complete. Bray Wyatt wins the title, gets Alexa as Rob says as his Harley Quinn. Braun Strowman becomes a heel, just goes on a tear afterwards. They try and rehab him as a new heel character because I think he's lost a lot of momentum as the Universal Champion. Surprisingly enough, he just feels like a Big Show reign as world champion, like the Big Show's first reign as world champion, where he just fought a load of randos and it didn't mean anything by the end of it. And yeah, so that would be like a, a double turn completely that one. My other option, which is the one I'm actually going to go with, despite myself, is that Alexa and Braun have been playing mind games with The Fiend. And that Alexa is pretending to be into The Fiend and Braun is pretending to not care about Alexa anymore to try and get one over on The Fiend and prove once and for all that The Fiend doesn't have, Bray Wyatt doesn't have control over Braun anymore. The Braun's the one in control instead. So I'm going to go with Alexis screws the, the Fiend out of the match and Braun wins and retains. I'd be up for that. It'd be kind of yeah, interesting. That's, that's, that's kind of what, because they have been teasing for, well, I say teasing for a long time since the next match challenge thing, that there is something between Braun and Alexa. So they might decide to go with that as like, this is Alexa's new direction. She's Braun's girlfriend and she'll be fighting for the SmackDown Women's title picture again and outside of the, the tag team thing with Nikki Cross. No, but, so this, go on. Uh, no, I was pretty much done, so you go ahead. I was going to say, the only thing about this match is that I don't say this often, but I really hope it's overbooked because these guys are going to stink out the joint. Yeah, that's what I was, that was, the point I was going to say. It's like, it definitely is going to be overbooked because it's these two, but it, that's the better option because these two, if these two have a straight-up wrestling match, then we might as well not have this match on the card because that's... In any other realm, it's a bathroom break, but it's the fact that it's these two and there's some interest with Alexa Bliss and there's going to be some sort of weird violence and shenanigans and camera trickery and all that other stuff to make it... Okay, That that's the thing that makes it somewhat bearable or somewhat interesting. Well, you know what is strange is we don't have a single match that's been clarified as a cinematic match for this card. Good. The yeah. cinematic element is the fucking Thunderdome, Tony. I think that that's why they don't want to do that. And uh, maybe they're going to stop with this whole thing where they're just like, you know, let's put a background track to things and let's make the, you know, tentacle monsters pop up and all that other kind of crap. But if any match does become more on that cinematic side of things, it's probably going to be this one. And um, I guess we'll see if that's one way or the other or whatever, but the last match to talk about is the WWE Championship match. Drew McIntyre defending the title against Randy Orton. And just the same as you should have been doing this whole other time, drop your comments below. Tell us your thoughts on uh, what you think is going to happen and stuff. And uh, whether you agree or disagree, uh, I, I'm i going to say my official prediction is no contest. I think that Retribution screws this whole thing up that this is the final match of the pay-per-view and the entire game plan of SummerSlam, Payback, follow-up, all that other kind of stuff is essentially, wouldn't not that this actually is the case, but in their mindset, wouldn't it be interesting if SummerSlam goes off the air where the title match between Drew and Randy gets interfered with by Retribution and we lose the feed aren't you going to tune into Raw afterward to find out what happened? Fully 100% sticking on that prediction. I don't think that we've get in, we get any kind of an actual winner here because Drew and Randy are both so well protected right now that if either of them wins or loses, it really kind of sets them back. And 
I feel like if you have McIntyre beat Orton, he loses some of that mystique that he's been building up. And if you have Orton beat McIntyre, it's kind of shitty to have him go from he wins the title in front of nobody and he loses the title when it's the closest thing to having an actual fan thing set up. They don't seem to care about that sometimes, so it wouldn't be the craziest thing in the world, but I retribution's got to come into this in some fashion. They didn't do shit on Monday Night Raw. Who knows what they're going to do on SmackDown, but I am sticking to that 100%. No, retribution causes a no contest, and there's no winner. Do they kill the feed, or do they just hack the fan boards to where it's like, oh, they're distracting Drew, and Randy Orton hits the RKO, and Randy Orton gets out of SummerSlam with the title. I think because that there's... would work if if there's some kind of a Orton and Retribution alliance or so, but then again, we were talking about a company that thought Extreme Rules was fine to have one match be a guy forfeits a championship match and the guy doesn't forfeit the championship and another person is uh she gets her uh her friend to wear a referee shirt and count the pin and then they say that doesn't count but we're gonna go to the next segment anyway and then the other one is somebody gets thrown into a swamp so that's the way that the last pay-per-view was so they could do something where they hack the feeds and then they just become it, the pay-per-view just goes off the air or they could do a distraction type thing where Michael Cole could reveal that he's been in retribution this whole time. And he, I don't know, anything can happen. And that's not like the, could, the good, anything can happen. It's just that anything can freaking happen kind of thing. I could see completely what Tony is saying. And even though I think that might be what happens, I'm still going to say my official prediction is Randy Orton wins the match and walks out of SummerSlam with the title. Yeah, that's pretty much what mindset, my mindset is as well. I think that the retribution thing could happen, but that's in order to essentially take Drew out of the world championship picture pretty much as soon as possible and have him feud, be the leader of the Raw, in, well, the Raw fight back against retribution. But Randy will be holding the title in the meantime. So Randy wins this match. Yeah, I've got Orton winning this too. Um, I just feel like... Uh... Drew McIntyre probably hasn't been the best champion or the champion they hoped for, and it's not entirely his fault. Uh, it's kind of hard to be a world champion when you've got no audience every week. Um, I don't know if Retribution's going to uh, enter the match um, and interfere, but it seems like if they're going to do it, I think the main event would be the best time to do the payoff. So nobody thinks that there's a chance Drew McIntyre just retains? No. No, not on his own, no. I, I wish I wish it was the case because I know they'll put. I think that they're probably putting a lot of like stigma on the fact that the ratings have been dropping. And while he's been champion, even though I don't think that any of that is due to his fault, I think most of the stuff that he's been doing as champion has been successful and would have gone over if there was a crowd there. But they've done too much with Randy Orton to build him up, and essentially you need Orton to be champion when Edge comes back and beats him for it. So, and Randy Orton has been doing great work. You know, he's been shining right now. I definitely see Randy Orton walking out with the belt. So how do you want to do this where if there's potential tiebreakers or anything with uh, with that kind of thing, Cal? Okay, so for the tiebreaker, in just in case that we do have, I mean, we do have like a quite a, a mixed match of predictions, but if somebody was to end uh, top with like an even amount, my prediction, well, the tiebreak would be a, oh, well, a time prediction for the Braun Strowman Bray Wyatt match. So essentially, whoever gets the closest time for that match gets the gets the victory in the case of a time break. I went with that one because it's kind of one which could go really long, but could also go really short. So I thought it would be a bit of a a, a wild card to throw into that one. So I will go with a time prediction to start off with, of. Six minutes, 35. Nine minutes and 36 seconds. Where you go? Um, 
shit, I got no idea. I didn't know we were doing match uh, length predictions. <laughs> no, no, no. I, yeah, we, we kind of discussed it on the uh, takeover one yesterday, but like I've got to feed it over. But is this for the whole card or the main event? Just just for the Braun Strowman uh, Bray Wyatt match. Um, shit, that's gonna be a short one. Probably eight minutes, and I'll say eight minutes fifty seconds. What was the high? So you get six, eight, and nine. Yeah, I have 936. Oh. He is 850. And Callum has 635. Yep. I'll say 937. You. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do the price is right rule. Okay. Yeah. So, I, I, mean, that, I guess that's a fair enough one. But, uh, It'd be hilarious okay, if so. it's 936 and a half. <laughs> I'm just hoping that it's like two minutes and then I just win because I've got the lowest one. So. <laughs> So, yeah, that's... Okay, so in the case of a tie-break, which I think is unlikely considering the breadth of different uh, predictions we have, but in the case of that, that will be the settler for it. Nice. All right, well, that's the full card. Anything else uh, you guys want to talk about? Um, payback is next week, and I have to assume part of that has got to be, hey, Retribution fucked over McIntyre. They're going to get unmasked. I pay back or something with Retribution and McIntyre I pay back. Yeah, I imagine it will be, be either they'll have the rematch because he got screwed over or they'll do some sort of like mask uh, going on. They'll, they'll, they'll do an unmasking of one of the guys from Retribution. I pay back. I hope that they do something like that instead of just having people rock around and go like, you see that? We threw a th center block on the ground. Whoa. <laughs> yeah, exactly. although, although in the current climate, is it right to unmask somebody? <laughs> oh well Callum's got a point all the more reason why they should do a mask uh, versus something match at, <laughs> with Rey Mysterio or whatever a, ma a mask it. versus COVID match <laughs> <laughs> spoiler COVID win the new WWE pay for you outbreak <laughs> <It's> just... <laughs> I like it do it Alrighty, well, uh, yeah, that's that's pretty much it. SummerSlam is going to happen this Sunday. Of course, we're going to do the usual thing here where we're going to do the live coverage on SmartGuyMama.com with the results and some quick thoughts of whatever I think about it. Usually just like one sentence of like, that sucked or that kind of thing. Because then we do the post show. And uh, of course, I got my wrestling news and Bleacher Report articles that I write up during the pay-per-views that will review things in that fashion. But the, uh, the post show is going to be the same kind of thing as we're doing for TakeOver. So we got two extra podcasts coming this weekend for the pay-per-view points. We also have the hot tags. That's the next thing you're going to be checking out. And we've got the Paul Heyman Smackdown podcast. So to talk a little bit more about that, here's Callum. Yeah, so the Paul Heyman Smackdown podcast that comes out every single Saturday here on the Smart Home Moment channel, whichever, wherever you get your uh, podcast feeds. So, yeah, that's where me and Rob go back to the year 2002. Check out every single episode of SmackDown that Paul Heyman was the head writer for. So, yeah, the episode that's coming up next in your feed will be the SummerSlam 2002 Go Home Show, which is main evented by a tag team match with The Rock and Edge versus Chris Benoit and Eddie Guerrero. So definitely a match worth checking out. If you haven't seen that episode already, make sure you uh, give it a watch before you listen to our thoughts about it. And then, obviously, the on Tuesday going uh, going forward, there will be a episode in the dark cast feeds. So for the Patreon people who have the dark cast here of the actual SummerSlam 2002 review, one of the greatest SummerSlams of all time. So make sure you check out our thoughts on that as well. Uh, yeah, find me on Twitter. Uh, oh, great go home. No, I was just gonna say great go home show. Probably going to be a lot better than the one we'll see on Friday from 2020, but fantastic episode of SmackDown. Check that podcast out. Yeah, outside of that, you can follow me on Twitter at WolfMeister14 and check out all the articles on smartcomeout.com, especially the power rankings. Make sure you be lined to that one first. Yeah, and you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Dude Felice. Check out Fightful and WrestleZone all weekend long as we keep you up to date with everything going on with TakeOver, SummerSlam, Dynamite on Saturday night, uh, Beyond Wrestling, GCW, because we're kind of getting back to normal even though nothing is normal right now and yeah just keep watching and keep enjoying wrestling Wago. all right you can follow me on twitter on twitter at Stephen Wago. also check the mega maniacs and i'll be posting any links and updates to my stream and stuff over there 
And you can follow me at Tony Mango. You can follow all sorts of different things that I'm doing by just clicking around and seeing different social media profiles and different things that are happening on the websites and stuff. But fanboysanonymous.com. Stay tuned for that Lucifer review or rundown or whatever I end up doing. Haven't quite figured it out yet. Stay tuned for all the other things that are happening on smartcatmoment.com. And we will continue on here and follow things the way that we've been talking. Next week, we will get into the pay-per-view point stuff for Payback. We'll do the Fantasy League draft for their teams and anything else we're going to be doing. So uh, whether you're listening to us on Spotify or iTunes or whatever, I know right now Google Podcasts is having some kind of an issue with the feeds because why is that just a thing that's happening, you know, during COVID? It doesn't seem like that should be an issue, but a lot of things... uh, Feed wise, just seems like people don't want to keep their services up and running, but there might be a problem on that on Google podcasts. It might be applicable to Google play as well. I'm not entirely sure. So I recommend always, of course, the best possible thing that you can do to check out this channel is to go to the YouTube page because YouTube is the thing that I prefer to actually kind of target. And if you are over on the YouTube channel, hit the like button on the video to show that you liked this podcast and you enjoyed listening to us. And subscribe if you haven't done that already. And ring that little notification bell because when we do get new videos up on here, when we do go live, when we do anything like that, then you'll get an email notification and you'll be pretty quick to listen to it and stuff. So anyway, that's it for the SummerSlam pay-per-view point prediction side of things at the very least. And we will see you with the hot tags, everybody. But for now, this has been another Smart Out Moment and we're being counted out. Oh!